Are we as humans just meandering through life, or are we truly living? What does it mean to really be alive? Are we doomed to be slaves of our past for the rest of our lives? How can we be relieved from the weight that we carry from our past? These are all questions I constantly ask myself during my daily existential crises, and today I'm going to go over some of the answers that Cowboy Bebop has given me to these questions. Before we begin, let's delve into the general premise of the show. Cowboy Bebop is an anime with a self-contained episodic structure, each episode with its own unique story that is generally unrelated to the overarching plot, with some episodes that provide context to the world and the past of the Bebop crew spread throughout the series. Despite the episodic structure, the show is packed with themes about the harsh realities of human existence. Are you listening to me? There's no beef in here. So you wouldn't really call it bell peppers and beef, now would you? Yes, I would. Well, it's not! It is when you're broke, alright? While giving us cathartic realizations about how, or if we can even free ourselves from the shackles of our past. I'm still in the dark. I may never know anything about my past. Doesn't really matter, does it? Easy for you to say, at least you have a past. And you have a future. <laughs> That's what counts. <laughs> Now, it's time to introduce the Bebop crew, Spike, a calm, cool, apathetic bounty hunter whose fearless and gung-ho approach to life masks a dark and mysterious past. Jet, an ex-cop turned bounty hunter whom serves as a voice of reason to the crew, contrasting Spike's reckless all-or-nothing decision-making. Faye, your cliché hot-headed female confidant whom spends most of her hard-earned money on gambling and drinking. Unlike the rest of the Bebop crew, Faye is introduced to the show with no knowledge of her past, which serves as a major plot point for her character arc throughout the series. Ed, the wandering scamp of the group who retains the childlike innocence and zest for life that died in the rest of the crew a long time ago. And Ayn, a data dog who follows our crew around and serves as a sort of comic relief with Ed every now and then. Like with most of Shinichiro's work, I finished the show a complete wreck and question my very existence. Today, I'm going to be sharing two key life lessons I've taken away from this masterpiece of a show, and hopefully you guys can relive the lessons and emotions you've expressed after finishing the show as well. As always, there will be spoilers in this discussion, so if you haven't finished the show, please watch and come back to this video. I guarantee you, you will not regret it. Without further ado, let's get into it. This forlorn feeling that maybe we could have gotten along with certain individuals if our circumstances or past were slightly different is a common theme in Cowboy Bebop, but it's also prevalent in our own lives. I catch myself thinking that if I were raised in a wealthier family, believed in this god, or if I was raised in a particular culture, maybe these people and I could actually be comrades. In a world divided by class, religion, culture, it's never really been easy to find common ground with our fellow human beings. As naturally communal beings, we crave nothing more than to counter our own loneliness. Yet, we're thrown into a world that divides us in seemingly endless ways. We can see this fear of loneliness even with characters as closed off as Faye, whose avoidance of the Bebop crew around session 12 was actually stemmed from a fear of losing them. They say humans are social animals, they can't live alone. <sighs> But you can live pretty well by yourself. I tell you, instead of feeling alone in a group, it's better to have real solitude all by yourself. When I'm dealing with them, I swear it's nothing but trouble. You were just afraid they'd abandon you, so you abandoned them. <laughs> Although the world tries to divide human beings in countless ways, this doesn't stop our protagonist Spike from empathizing and even helping some of his bounties. Spike has this uncanny ability to relate to and empathize with his bounties, despite circumstances and conflict of interest that seemingly make it impossible for them to befriend one another. The best example of this was in Session 8 with the wannabe gangster Rocco Bonaro, whom Spike goes out of his way to help despite a clear conflict of interest. Rocco risks his life to steal the seeds of a rare valuable plant from his own game, known to cure blindness. But not before Spike attempts to save his life. Even after Rocco's death, Spike goes out of his way to deliver the seeds of this rare plant to Rocco's blind sister, and inform her of Rocco's death, even though he really has no reason to. Even at the time of Rocco's death, he tragically mentions that in another life, Spike and him probably would have been friends. Okay, hang on. Now don't die! Don't die! 
I wonder if I had met you earlier in my lifetime, do you think that we would have been friends? Spike's actions are already an indication that a friendship had formed between the two, despite their circumstances. The expression of vulnerability of the Bebop crew from seemingly closed off characters like Faye, and Spike's uncanny ability to empathize with his bounties, is a good reminder that perhaps our circumstances may not be as divisive as we think they are, and that our human capacity to connect with others can transcend any circumstance. It's just that... I never got to see Roko once with my own eyes. Hey, what was he really like? You know better than anyone, without looking. He was a terrific guy. Two, our past doesn't matter and we must face our fears to truly feel alive. Much like the characters of the Bebop crew, we subconsciously allow our past to dictate our present actions, for better or for worse. We often allow the past to keep us from moving forward in our lives, whether our goals are the pursuit of a higher standard of living, the pursuit of our own truth, or finally mustering up the courage to face our fears and to feel truly alive. No matter what circumstances we've been placed in, this belief that the past can shackle us and doom us to a meaningless existence is really a product of our own fear, deeply rooted, paralyzing fear that can prevent the best of us from truly moving forward in our own lives. We can see this fear in several members of the Bebop crew, whether it be through Spike's avoidance of his past with the Red Dragon Syndicate, or Faye's constant fleeing from her debt and from building relationships with others. Although this fear instilled by our past can indeed paralyze us, the show constantly goes out of its way to remind us that the past is ultimately an illusion that keeps us where we are and that in order to break out of it, we have to face our fears. This illusory effect that the past has in our lives can be seen the most from no other than Spike, who throughout the show constantly questions whether or not he is living in a dream that he's yet to waken from. I'm just watching a bad dream I never wake up from. I'll wake you up right now. The show also uses Spike's differing eye colors as symbolism for the past and the present. His left eye, which he lost and replaced after an accident, constantly looks back into his dark past, and his right eye, symbolizing Spike's capacity to live for the present and face his fears. One question I found myself asking after finishing the show was this. Was this a happy ending for Spike? Did he ever figure out if he was truly alive and conquer his past, despite how the show ended? And honestly, I think it's undeniable that he does. At the final scene, as we see Spike walking down the steps of Syndicate HQ, bloodied after defeating Vicious, he faces the audience with his right eye open and his left eye firmly closed, and utters the iconic last line, Bang. There's quite a bit of symbolism and parallels within the story to unpack, so let's start with the eyes. The left eye, firmly closed at the end, symbolizes the past that had shackled Spike for so long, almost as if he closed a dark chapter in his life. And the right eye, being the only eye open after confronting Vicious, symbolizes Spike's present and lets us, the audience, know that Spike finally found his answer, that he is truly alive, and awake from the dream that was his past. Why do you have to go? Where are you going? What are you going to do? Just throw your life away like it was nothing? I'm not going there to die. I'm going to find out if I'm really alive. I have to do it, Faye. Next, the iconic line, bang. If you remember this, this wasn't the first time Spike said this. The ending scene is a direct parallel to the ending of Session 6, Sympathy for the Devil. I see. Yes, I can finally die at last. Uh, I feel so heavy. (sighs) But I feel... I finally feel at ease. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. As if. At the end of the session, Wen, while nearing death after being finally able to age, 
tells Spike that he finally feels at ease, and asks Spike if he understands the feeling. At the time, Spike obviously can't relate, then proceeds to utter the iconic line, bang, toward the sky after throwing Wed's harmonica in the air. This ending is a continuation of that scene in session 6, reassuring the audience that Spike can finally be at ease now, and can rest in peace knowing that he conquered his past and finally awoken from his dream. The irony of this realization though, for Spike, is that it came at the cost of his own life. Although this ending is undeniably tear-jerking to say the least, I personally can rest easy knowing that Spike was finally able to face the demons of his past, and finally, if only for a brief moment, live fully in the present. Now, back to the question, what does it mean to truly be alive? I think Spike in his final moments makes it crystal clear for us. To be truly alive, we have to relentlessly face the fears that stop us from getting what we want in this life. Spike was a true testament to this fearlessness in everything that he did. In the last episode, the old native guru that advises Spike shows the relationship between death and fear beautifully, stating that Do not fear death. Death is always at our side. When we show fear, it jumps at us faster than light. But if we do not show fear, it casts its eye upon us gently and then guides us into infinity. Aside from the clear plot armor that has kept Spike alive up until this point, I think that he's also gotten this far because of his lack of fear of death. His ability to just go with the flow and in the face of death say nothing but oh well, whatever happens, happens, is truly an admirable trait and may make us feel more alive than we could ever feel living our lives in fear. Despite his physical death at the end of the show, it's clear to see that spiritually, he felt the most alive in his last moments, when he faced the epitome of his fears, the demons of his past. In a sense, death only gently looked over him for those moments. Now, I know this was all a bit heavy, and from a ton of videos I watch on this show, the ending is painted as an unhappy one. But I honestly believe that Cowboy Bebop can also be seen as a prime example of how to truly feel fulfilled in this life, and fully alive within our own lives. Despite the crew splitting up in the end, each member mustered the courage to face their fears, and to ultimately break out of the illusions that were their past. Jet, in session 10, was finally able to discover the truth to why Elisa, his ex left him, embraced who he was as a person somebody who valued stability and making sound decisions. Ed finally decides to look for her flaky father, but does so with an optimistic attitude, despite the constant absence from her father throughout the whole show. And Faye finally gets her memories back and returns to her childhood home, only to find out that there was nothing left to go back to, and though tragically realizes that the Bebop crew was the closest thing to a home that she ever had. Although the confrontation of the crew's past did not result in a quote-unquote happy ending for all members, their stories serve as a reminder that we too can conquer our past, discover and claim our own truths in this life, and to ultimately feel truly present. So for those of you still watching who still feel shackled by the demons of their past, or are living in the dream that they can't seem to wake up from, to you I say, bang. Thank you. And all